Okay. Just like I have one-dimensional arrays, guess what else I can have? Multiple-dimensional arrays, okay? I can have two-dimensional, I can have three-dimensional, I really can have any dimension, all right? We indicate dimension by putting sizes after the name of the array. And um, so we've, we've seen where we would use a single array and parallel arrays, okay? But there's a lot of applications for two-dimensional arrays. Question? Yeah, so one of the big applications for two-dimensional arrays is game boards. Chess, tic-tac-toe, battleship, checkers. These all have a grid, and a two-dimensional array works really well with that, okay? Now, when we look at a two-dimensional array, the first number indicates the number of rows, and the second number indicates the number of columns, okay? Now, that's just physically, you know, that's just virtually in memory. So, um, let's look at this example right here, where I have a table that has three rows, one, two, three rows, and four columns, okay? Now, two-dimensional arrays are not that hard because we usually use for loops with them, okay? But here's where people screw up. You know how in a spreadsheet, if I was going to read this column, I would go column and then row, you know how you go A1, A2? Forget all that, okay? Because when I indicate an element of a two-dimensional array in programming, I use the row first and then the column. And students really get thrown off by this, OK? So this guy right here is table 0, 0. But this guy right here is what? 0, 1, which might go against what you, I don't know. I don't know how bingo works. B2, whatever, you know, I don't know. I don't think we have a big bingo crowd here. But anyway, a lot of the things that we, we do, we use the column number first. Forget that thought, okay? So that is one of the biggest, you know, mistakes that people have to get used to doing, all right? Um, so now this is not what it looks like in memory. In memory, it's stored as what we call row major order which means that 0, 0 is stored first, 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 3 are stored. So it's linear in memory, obviously. OK? Now, can you guess how we would go about doing work on a two-dimensional array? How would we go about setting this whole array to zeros, for example? Ideas. Well, yeah, but if that's fine if we can do it by hand because there's only 12 elements here, but what about if there's 1,000? Claudia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so what am I going to use for my looping structure? Nested for loops. Our buddy, the nested for loops, right? Okay. So if you're not familiar with a nested for loop, then you're going to struggle a little bit with this. But otherwise, um, this is what they look like in memory. Um, otherwise, we're going to use nested for loops. Now, my piece of advice when working with two-dimensional arrays is use good index names. Use good index names. So let's, let's look at... Um, what happens here? So what happens here? What is the first thing that happens in this guy?